Welcome to a Trek Zone Conversation where we dive into science fiction. Today, Emmett Plant is back on Trek Zone to follow up our chat last week. Emmett, I didn't think you'd be back so soon. Thanks for firing up the video I, link today. I didn't think I'd be back so soon either, but it was weird because a bunch of stuff went down on the day the last episode aired. So I'm hoping that this time around it'll be a lot more calm when this one airs, I guess. Well, before we get into it, a quick reminder that you can get behind the scenes goss and early access to all Trek Zone podcasts by becoming a member today. Click the join button on any Trek Zone video on YouTube. Go to the Trek Zone slash support or put your phone up to the QR code on screen right now. Emmett, folks are interested in hearing about your work, so I think a third part already needs to be in the planning. But today I want to focus on the show of the alleged grifter. And I have to say that because my lawyers tell me I have to say that. Alleged grifter that is Alec Peters. He's come out swinging against you. Uh, yeah, which is super weird. <laughs> I, well, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's definitely one of the weirdest things that's ever happened in my career. And I'd like to, you know, say that I've also worked on Star Trek and if you don't think conventions have gotten a little weird from time to time, <laughs> trust me, they have. This is weirder than any of that. Wow. This is a this is something else entirely. Well, in a confused rambling on his website, Alec claims you threatened violence against Jeff Craig. He posted a screenshot of that tweet you sent in which there's no threat of violence. We can even go into how toxic fandom is the exact thing he is doing, not the other way around. But how do you feel knowing that he's reached out to his buddies at Viacom CBS Legal about you? Oh, well, my God, that's a that's a gift. Dude, that's, <laughs> that's just a gift. There's... <laughs> The problem is that anybody who is there for the actual threat understands what was happening and that Jeff was threatening someone else and then someone else. And I said, hey, man, like, if you want to threaten people, try it on me. You can come down here. I'll fight you. Whatever you want. Like, just stop threatening other people. Like, if you really have to have this out, I'll be their shield. Like, just just give it to me. I'll take it. Um, and that... And there was one tweet in there that Alex Alec decided was a threat, and that's weird. Now, in this article, what does he call me on his website? Like on the tweets, I'm like a he says I'm a CDS employee, which would be news to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's that's not how the industry God, works. It is not. No, um, I'm trying to think of the people I actually know that are full-time employees of CBS on Star Trek, I think I can think of two. I can think of two people I know that work at CBS on Star Trek, and they are CBS employees. And this what is, is this? the industry. Everyone else is a contractor. Exactly. And what does this say yep. about Alec, who claims to know everything and everyone uh, involved in Star Trek? I don't have any reason not to believe him on that, except for all of the reasons, which are he's a liar. Like, he just makes stuff up all the time. So mm. I'm not willing to say it's wrong because it's almost, it's not falsifiable, right? I can't reach out to everyone who has worked on Star Trek over the past, you know, 50-some years and say, hey, do you know Alec? Like, that. not only is that impossible, it would be a tremendous waste of time. Exactly um, right. I don't feel the need to like flex. Like for me, it's the work that's important. Like I, I choose to focus on the work because that's, that's what I do. That's what I'm paid for. You know, um, I don't get into this name dropping thing that he's super into. I don't know. Maybe it's an LA thing. I don't know. Well, this Jeff Craig situation, did it go down the way as described? Was was the employer contacted uh, in regards to what he was saying? And and he is a prolific uh, person uh, that is known to be quite 
adversarial when it comes to defending and supporting Alec. And he really certainly uh, has gone off the deep end quite a lot of times. Interestingly, now his Twitter account is locked. Uh, so only uh, followers can see what he's talking about, uh, which is very interesting. Right. But uh, yeah, was his employer contacted? His, you know, And we'll talk about another instance where this situation was reversed in, in just a second. Basically, he just wouldn't stop with the threats. Even after I said, dude, just come after me. Like, leave these other people people alone. And then I, I people say, like, I wrote to his business. It's like, no, I tagged him on a funny tweet. And I said, hey, are you guys going to give Jeff enough time off to come kick my ass? Like, there's got to be schedule here. Like, he's got to come down here from Washington State. Like, we have to set this stuff up for you guys willing to, to hook him up. And then somebody at their, their company was like, hey, um, what's going on here? I'm like, I don't know, but your guy is out here saying weird stuff. Um, and they're like, can you DM us with some information? And I'm like, sure. I'll send you everything I got. The funny thing is I know that I was not the only person that they asked for more information. The conversation I had with his company actually went on for a couple of days. It, it went, it went through overnight, um, with the, you know, the powers that be there. I have no idea what they did. I don't know what's going on there. Um, I guess that's a good rule of thumb. If you don't want to accept responsibility for threatening other people on the internet, you probably shouldn't threaten other people on the internet. I know that sounds weird. You'll almost never get a speeding ticket if you're not speeding, right? Just, you know. Exactly I think right. the internet gives people a little bit of anonymity. Um, I mean, not Jeff, because he puts his name on it, uh, which honestly I do respect. I put my name on it too because I don't want anybody running around saying that they're me. Anyway, but I think there's a lot of, once you get behind a keyboard, there's like, ah, oh, yeah, I can say whatever I want. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, but adults are going to make you, you know, they yeah, expect you to, to back it up. Yeah, it's not unaccountable. There is the small matter of the Troll Hunters Facebook Messenger group that Alec created. We have the screenshots from that on the Axe Monitor Facebook group. Uh, they not only attempted to do the same thing to Sandy uh, Greenberg, but they actually followed through and rang his employer in the United Kingdom uh, and attempted to get him fired for uh, being opposed to Wax. And I really hate the term hater because it, it's not. The, the calling truths is, is not hating, but there's a lot of double standards here. So why do you think it's, do you, why do you think it's acceptable to them to engage in such behaviour, but when the tables are turned, it's a really big deal and you're threatening his livelihood and you're trying to make him, get him fired? Um, let me take issue with one thing you said first. Uh, you said that Alec had created the group. I don't know if he did or not. I don't know enough about that group. Um, if you know that he did, great, but I, don't, I have no evidence to support that. I do have it on good authority. I'm not a hundred percent, but okay. I'm willing. I'm willing to stake a claim on that. I'm, I'm sure that it's something that uh, it, it certainly fits the uh, modus operandi. I think. <laughs> and this is the thing that's super weird to me. Why does that group even exist? Yep. Like, I don't understand. If I put out a piece of music and people didn't like it, um, they are allowed to not like it. It's a subjective thing. It's it's not an objective decision. That's always going to be an opinion. If people don't like my music, that's fine. I don't ex I don't expect everyone to love it. Um, in fact, the only try the only person I'm trying to impress with my music is me. Just sound better than I did before, right? But I cannot imagine a situation in which I would have a cadre of people on the internet um, gathered together to make plans to engage people that don't like their product. That's super weird. I have no idea why that even exists. Like, I cannot think of a reason that makes sense for that to exist. Because mm. somebody hates your fan film project. So the fuck what? Like, get on with your life. And this is, this is a lot of the problem I described on Twitter earlier this week. Um, Alec is a cosplay producer. He's not an actual producer. He hasn't been in meetings where they call you an idiot, where they say, oh, your ideas are bad. 
um, that you should, you know, you're going to be lucky to write, you know, punch up on America's Funniest Home Videos. Like, you, they haven't dealt, like, even, even writing in high school, it's like, oh, I don't like your writing. Great. Um, but you have to kind of live in the industry and get past all that stuff to get to the point where you're talking to agents and you're talking to lawyers and you're, you're, you're doing stuff and you're getting paid to do what you do. So he doesn't have any of that experience. He has no idea what it's like. Mm. Um, I think that's, if you talk to any producer and you say, Hey, your work on this thing sucked. They're going to be like, Hey, I got paid. Hmm. That's just the way business works. That's the way it goes. If, uh, they're not a producer and you're like, Hey, the thing you do sucks. Or I think you're doing that thing wrong. Um, they'll, they'll take it very personally and they'll get very upset. And I think that's what happened to Alan. It's a very siege mentality thing. That's, that's weird. But as much as people like to illegitimize fan films as, you know, whatever, um, you see a lot of people, you know, talking down on fan films as though people didn't put work into it. Um, I think fan films are still art, and I think art is subjective. I don't know any artist that's asked me to join a Facebook group to take on the people that think they suck. Um, honestly, most artists I know think they suck way more than randos on the internet could. Like, they're putting themselves through hell every day, wishing they were as good as they want to be. You know, it's, it's a real thing. It's like imposter syndrome. Um, you know, I know people with Emmys who feel like this, you know, it's, it's crazy. Um, but no, I, I don't understand why you would put a group together like that. That doesn't seem nothing about it seems normal or right. Yeah. It doesn't seem like a correct thing to do. It, it doesn't seem like an honest thing to do. Like, so what dude, people don't like you or they don't like your fan film. Why, why do you care? Could you imagine oh, yeah, like the absolutely. Rolling Stones put out a new record and they're like, hey, secret Rolling Stones fans, we need you to go out and say mean shit about Green Day. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yes. I cannot imagine in a million yes. years. Um, or even like, like street musicians, right? Yeah. Like if, if you don't like them and you keep moving on, they're not like, all right, my next song is about you, you fat fuck. You're like, <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> like, or like you leave. And he picks like three of the people that are there and like, Hey, did you see that guy that saw me and just kept walking? Get him. Like, what? Why, Get him. Why yeah. is this even a thing? Exactly right. him. Well, I have this screenshot of the initial approach uh, to you, his initial approach to you. What went through sure. your mind when this, this guy reaches out to you and says, Hey, what Star Trek did you produce? It was kind of weird that he would ask me what I do on Star Trek without Googling for half a second. Um, <laughs> it, it's super low effort. Um, you, you could literally go on Twitter, which is where I sent the message, um, click the link in my bio and see a bunch of my credits. It, it's not difficult to see or to find. It's not in a safe. I'm not keeping it secret. <laughs> uh, but it was like, yeah, okay, this guy hasn't spent half a second on Google figuring out who I am. Um, but, you know, the dude's like 60 years old or something, so maybe he's just not plugged in that way. I don't know. I thought it was weird. Well, for a lawyer by training, Alec certainly has engaged in a mighty amount of libel in his fight with you, saying that you have borderline personality disorder and that is a direct quote. He has that on the website. How do you respond to that? I don't really get hurt by people um, when they try to insult me. Um, it, it, it just it doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm bulletproof to it. Um, but honestly, it makes me think of my mom. My mom, uh, I, it's, I was a very, very poor kid. Um, I had a – my parent was a single mom, and she – waited tables and she bartended um, while she was going through nursing school. Uh, she became an LPN, then she became an RN. Um, all while she was trying to raise me and wow. try to do the best she can. And it's not easy. It's not easy at all. My mother did all of this while having bipolar disorder. She suffers from bipolar disorder and I actually mean suffers. It has 
torn away so many of the things in her life that um, she thought that she'd be able to have or, or things that she thought she'd be able to do. It, it's been a real, a real issue for her. And that, that sucks. The problem I have with Alex diagnosing me as borderline whatever he said, um, it, it's funny because for a while they didn't know if uh, bipolar disorder was something that could be hereditary. So I actually went to see a therapist and said, hey, this is what's going on. This is what I'm feeling. My life is going really, really well right now. I would like it not to spin out of control. If there is a possibility that I have bipolar disorder, can we just check it out? And I, I went to them over a few sessions and I took a bunch of tests and we had a lot of conversations. Um, and no, I have a clean bill of mental health. So I, I can't imagine that Alec was really looking out for my health and safety when he's making this accusation, but I don't know why he's making it. He's not qualified to make that diagnosis. Like, I'm not. Um, I, are you? Like, can you make that call? No. Um, no, because we're not medical professionals. It's a really weird thing to accuse someone of having or being. Like, if he had taken the time to say, like, you said this, and this means this, and I can look up this in the DSM for borderline personality disorder or whatever, and that's why I think this. And even if he's not a doctor, if he has solid medical reasoning and he can make that case, um, I, I think I'd have to look into it. You know, I, I would have to go to a therapist and say, hey, um, somebody said I, am, I have this. And I don't think I have this, but I want to talk to you about it to see if I have it. But he's just shit talking on the Internet. Like, he's not doing any of the work. He's just mm. yelling incoherently. I don't yeah. know why. I don't know what he gets up to. I don't know where he's got this time. I don't know where he has the time to, to put together a group of people to take on the people that don't like his fan films in, when he's supposed exist, to yeah. be making fan films. Yeah, exactly right? right. Like, go make something. Shut up. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. And it really, just not Alec um, specifically, but, in general, on the internet, you alluded to it earlier that uh, it, it, the internet sort of gives people this sense of this false sense of anonymity, where they can say whatever they like and, and type out whatever they like, and it doesn't matter because it's just on the internet and, and no one really knows who I am. But it's been proven, not just in this case, in in other cases as well, cyberbullying. Uh, you know, threats of harm in in school groups. Here in Australia, there was uh, quite a few news stories uh, a few years ago, you know, and it sort of comes up every now and then in the news cycle that um, the way people are driven to, to things, you know, terrible thought processes that get planted into people's minds because of words written on the internet. It comes to a point where what is this all about? And we bring it back to Alec and we go, what is this all about? It's about a stupid fan film that he can't produce. He has made 0% of a Star Trek fan film and he's getting shitty at everybody that is telling him that he can't make a Star Trek fan film. Instead of just fucking off and going into the obscurity that he should be going into. I, yeah, I don't know why this is even a fight for him. Like, if people are saying that they don't think he's going to make the movie, the best of all of those people wrong is to make the movie. Exactly right. And it's been years and yep. there's been not a frame delivered. Right. Um, I think there might've been one scene like five years ago. Yep. Um, yep. One before, scene filmed in a car park. It, it was prelude, right? Like in 2014. We uh, had prelude in 2014 and yep. then. And then the they Vulcan made that. Thing, yep. Which isn't being it. used at all. Yeah, exactly right. And I think the even the the funnier thing with it is that his his sycophant PR man Jonathan Lane uh, has made more Axanar than Alec Peters has, proving that the problem with Axanar is not Axanar, it's Alec Peters. I, I don't know why he's doing the this, this stuff he's doing. It seems very strange to me. I'm trying not to make any value judgments, mm. but it really does seem to me that he's just a shitty person. Like, I think he's just a, I think he's just an asshole. And I think that's okay. If you're using your asshole powers for good, um, 
I, I, I think I'm definitely an asshole from time to time. Um, but I'm not trying to take anybody down. I'm not trying to be hurtful. Um, I'm just being very assertive with, with what I think and expressing my opinion. That's not what he's doing. He's doing a, a different thing entirely. And it's, I can't explain it. You'd really need to speak to someone with some medical authority. Like, mm. what the hell is this? Because I can't do it. Well, the words hate group have been brought out of the cold storage again to describe AXA Monitor and other people that disagree with AXA Nara, as we talked about today, Emmett, uh, and we know how much mm -hmm. the AXA Nara supporters love to use that term. Do you see that as an apt description of AXA Monitor, Carlos's group that uh, that you've joined up and uh, and and started posting in, looking looking from the outside looking in? Well, yeah, I mean, that's the funny thing. Like, I didn't even know about AXA Monitor until like the other week. I didn't know they existed. Um, I think if they were a hate group, they'd be posting a lot more hate. Um, we have to be honest with, with each other about this kind of bullshit for a second. A hate group is generally a group of people that hate somebody because of their race or their sexual orientation or, uh, or their religion. That's, that's a hate group when you're specifically hating somebody for being something that um, they can't control. Like if you hate black people, okay, you, maybe you'll join a hate group because you think black people are bad or whatever, but black people don't get the choice to be black. It's, it's like this whole blue lives matter thing, right? It's like, y'all, the thing was like black lives matter. Yes, they do. Yeah, but okay, but all lives matter and cops lives matter. And it's like, okay, a kid in the suburbs with no weapon did not choose to be black. It never happened in his life. That was not a decision he got to make. Um, that person decided if they wanted to be a police officer. That person decided they wanted to accept that responsibility on behalf of society mm. to be a police officer. That was an active decision they made in their life. And a lot of them work super hard for it. I don't fault them at all. Like I said, like my family's all law enforcement. So, but I think the problem with calling AXA Monitor a hate group is because they're critiquing decisions that Alec has made and how they don't seem to make a lot of sense. Uh, and I think the reason they don't make a lot of sense is because he's cosplaying as a producer. I, I wish I could tell you that um, it was a lot more scandalous and interesting than it is. It's a lot of people that go back and forth about uh, economics issues, legal issues, and how they intersect with Axonar, which is not well managed. Uh, I mean, here's the other thing, too. I am no fan of Vic Mignogna for obvious reasons. Um, you know, I've seen him grab a woman without her consent. I testified against him. I am not a big fan of his behavior. And I, I am uncomfortable with his character. I would never hire him to do anything for me ever in a million years. I can't, I can't get behind him. Do you know what I mean? Like I can't, mm. I can't say like, yeah, this. I would trust this guy. I wouldn't recommend him to anybody else, and I wouldn't hire him um, until you know a little time has gone by and he can prove that he's not going to do this nonsense anymore. Dude makes an amazing fan film, though. Like, if you're going to go out there and, like, like, say that Star Trek Continues sucks because Vic is awful, that's patently untrue. Star Trek Continues is best of class. It's amazing. It's so well done. It's incredible. It's almost, when I saw it for the first time, it was literally breathtaking for me. I cannot tell you, as a huge fan of the original series, how cool that was for me. Vic is a good producer. He managed his budget. He managed his time. He produced a product. That's it, man. Vic's a good producer. Alec hasn't produced anything, as far as I can tell. Hmm. Um, I have done half a second of Googling, and I haven't found anything he's produced. Um, I think he might have made like a short with Richard Hatch or something. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I really don't know enough about him.
But I know that, you know, Vic Mignogna, tainted as he may be by his own decisions and his own behavior, um, he's a great producer of fan films. You know, I, Alec seems to be, you know, the worst of both worlds, right? He's unable to produce anything, and he's also an asshole. Like, is anybody winning with this combination? <laughs> exactly. Um, I don't, and, and I don't know why he's taking it out on me. It's actually gotten to the point where it is difficult to understand any of how any of this has happened. Well, Emmett, over the weekend, tensions seem to have simmered down a little bit publicly at least. Is this over between you, this little bit of a war? It's been spectacularly one-sided. Um, he, he screams things that don't make any sense. Uh, he's like, you know, you're not, you're not getting the real story from Emmett. And I have posted what he wrote to me in its entirety numerous times. Mm. Like, I don't know how much more open I can be with people. I am not finished with Alec Peters, on the other hand. The guy has taken my intellectual property and put it on his website and sent it out in an email to tens of thousands of people next to crazy-ass accusations that don't make any sense. Uh, that's a violation of my intellectual property, and that has to be dealt with and managed. Um, he does not own that picture. He doesn't have a license for that picture. I know this because I took that picture, I own it, and he never bought a license from me to use it. And, I mean, surprise, surprise, Alec Peters doesn't really understand copyright. But, I mean, this is like the biggest non-story of the universe. Um, but I, I think if he wants me to, to stop talking about him, Maybe he should uh, consider getting his head straight and backing way off and apologizing for being a jerk. Um, an apology would go a long way from him. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. Hmm. I, I, th I think he's just hell-bent on creating a narrative, and he doesn't care if his narrative doesn't make sense. Like, he doesn't care if people can just go out and find out exactly what was said and in what order because they can. And the more people know about it, the dumber he looks. So at this point, like, I would like an apology from him, but he should also be aware that this is insane self-sabotage. Like, you're causing yourself a lot of problems right now, and you don't have to be, but you are. I don't know why he's doing that. Um, as, as far as the, the intellectual property stuff, I... Um, I'm going to opt not to talk about that on the internet because that's not the right place to talk about that stuff. Um, but everything else is, it's just so strange. It's so weird to me. I feel bad because I came on the show and I wish I had better explanations for this behavior, but I don't. It, I, I, he seems to be I, trying to paint me as like an irrational um, impulsive, impetuous, and other I words. No, um, he's, he's trying to paint me as a person that I'm not. And that's fine. He can say whatever he wants, but he's got to know that other people know me. Like, other people have met me. I've been at conventions all over the country for years. Like, people know who I am. And that's not, that doesn't match up with what Alex saying. So, like, when Alex saying that stuff, people that know me are like, wow, really? What? <laughs> like, like Alec is talking about a much different Emmett plant than actually exists in objective reality. Well, it's certainly been an interesting ride uh, to watch for the last couple of weeks. I can only imagine what it's like to be sitting on the roller coaster as you have been, Emmett. I really appreciate your time coming in. And look, I know you said that you wish you had better explanations for what's going on. I think the only people that can tell us that is uh, Alec Peters himself um, getting inside his mind, and I, I don't think I necessarily want to do that. Uh, I do want to shine a light on what he's doing and... I mean, as you say, you've put it out there on Twitter. You can't get any more clearer uh, on what he's doing than by posting those, uh, by posting the conversation. It's in his own words as to what he's saying and what he's doing. Uh, exactly. Certainly, a very interesting time, Emmett, for you. And I'm, I'm, 
genuinely actually sorry that he's reached out to you and dragged you kicking and screaming into this world of his, uh, into this orbit of his that um, is just a, it's, it's, it's a bad place to be. <laughs> it's, just, it's been the weirdest situation to unfold from me saying, no, I don't want to work on your project. That I've ever had. <laughs> and that was it. Um, that was it. That was the end of the conversation. No, I don't want to work on it. And he's made it into this uh, bigger thing. Yeah. I, I don't know if he's just super insulted that I said no <laughs> or what, but it's certainly something. Um, I feel like I'm obligated to bring this up because someone brought it up in the comments of the last video. Um they wanted to talk to. They wanted you to talk to me about Starfleet International. Um, I'm happy to do so, but you know, I, I run a much much larger Star Trek fan club um, that was actually formed from people in Starfleet International. It's like just me and three friends. We started Trek Fan, and it's huge. Um, I, I don't like the idea that, that fan clubs need to compete with each other. Um, Starfleet can do their thing, and that's fine. They are very, very small. They haven't kept up with the times at all. They're still using a database from the 90s, literally from the 90s. Um, they are a fan club that looks just the way a fan club in the 90s needed to have looked, and they have not upgraded ever since. They've, they've not rebooted and, and made things better. Um, I think there's been... Five, six new Star Trek shows on the air in the past few years. And I think they've gained something like 500 members. Mm. If that's what you can do with huge new Star Trek releases, I'm, I'm concerned about the long-term viability of your organization. I tried to help them. I tried to help them a million times. And I, I took my ideas to them over and over and over again. I even ran for election in their organization twice. And I just got tired of people saying, we're not going to do your ideas. And I'm like, I, you know what? I don't, I'm done fighting with you. I'll just go implement them on my own with my friends. And surprise, they're successful. Um, I don't hate Starfleet. I'm actually still a member of Starfleet, believe it or not. But Alec seems to want to rely on all these people in Starfleet think you're a jerk. I'm like, yeah, I bet they do. Because, you know, I gave them a chance to, like, grow and be effective and be useful as a fan club to um, bring more Star Trek to Star Trek fans. Like, that's, that's what I was trying to do the whole time. And I talked about it a lot, and I lost elections and they didn't want to hear it. So I understand if they don't like me or they think I'm an asshole because I did that. Um, I suspect they're more of an asshole that I took those ideas, turned them around in over three years. Like we have three to four times the size of their membership. Um, but they do a very specific kind of, of fan club thing. Um, and you can tell it's specific because I speak to people that run other Star Trek fan clubs. And the funny thing is we all seem to get along pretty well. Um, Starfleet seems like a cult to a lot of people. And they do not play well with others. They like to think that they're the only kid on the block, that they are. They also have like made a lot of fake claims over the years. Like they're the largest club, not even close. I, I wish I could say it was different. And I wish I were overstating it, but I'm not. Mm. But generally, I don't want to talk shit about them because, like, I also run a fan club and I think everybody should do their own thing. Um, but I understand why people there would be mad at me. Certainly interesting times, Emmett. I really appreciate uh, you coming back to Trexon. Thanks for beaming in and uh, we will get you back really soon uh, to actually talk about better Star Trek things like your work. Yeah, I would love to. Um, you mentioned that you'd like to talk about um, audio work and I would love to do that with your audience. I think it'd be great. We should, we should definitely do that. If you want to have me come on and talk about, you know, which chocolate chip cookies do I like the best? I'll do that too. Like <laughs> I'm happy. I like, I like Trek Zone. I'll be here whenever you want. So. I love it. Emmett, I really appreciate it. We will talk to you again really soon, my friend. Thank you, sir. Have fun. Keep up to date with Twitter 
Catch new podcasts daily on YouTube. Plus, we're beaming to your favorite podcast app five days a week. Just search for Trek Zone and subscribe.